it is only mid-August, but I'm sure people are thinking about next year's garden a little bit, what went well, what didn't. And, you know, looking at their tomatoes, I know everyone's tomatoes are coming in hot and heavy, which is great for all those people who like to eat tomatoes. So a few things about saving your own tomato seed, like to talk about open pollinated versus hybrid. And so hybrid is the, when people plant a hybrid tomato, it just means someone has made a, a artificial cross between they've been made an intentional pollination and it, this is the resulting seed thereof. And the hybrids can be made by you, can be made by your neighbor, can be made by a large seed company, could be made by a university breeder, but a hybrid is just that, a hybrid. There's open pollinated so all heirlooms are open pollinated where you're just taking whatever pollination happens in the garden and in tomatoes, most, you know, tomatoes overall should be self-pollinated, but you can also have open pollinated that are not an heirloom that hasn't been saved for multiple generations, but that perhaps someone has just stabilized a variety or it has recently been developed and then it's been stabilized to be shared as open pollinated. It doesn't necessarily mean that it is an heirloom. So let's talk about saving your tomato seed. Uh, that you want to choose the tomatoes that are the best to be for you, whether that be the biggest tomato, the healthiest plant, the most interesting or colorful tomato, whatever you want to save and grow the next year that you're making this choice, choose the best examples of what you're saving. And this is, you know, choose the one that you really want to eat at the time you want to eat it. And it's a good idea to save multiple fruit for multiple plants of the same variety. That way, if there is any genetic diversity, you are capturing it. But sometimes, you know, that's just not the case. Maybe you're traveling somewhere and you have an amazing tomato out of your friend or acquaintance's garden and you just grab it and you can't do that. So tomatoes saving seeds does involve fermentation. So you want to get those seeds into a cup. They're covered in that gel, which is what you're trying to break down with the fermentation. So you're going to either scoop it out or squeeze it out. You want to cover it with water, you know, in a cup like that, maybe just half a cup of water. You're going to let it sit for three or four days. The good seeds, the viable seeds, so the fermentation will break down all that gel and give you nice, clean seed. Um, the good seeds will sink. Then after, you know, three, four days, you're going to scoop off the scum with a spoon, and then you're going to start rinsing what you have and decanting. And this is not something where you just want to put it underneath the kitchen sink and open it up full blast. Everything is going to go everywhere in the kitchen sink. But just take it slow. You want to repeat filling and decanting until you have clean seed. And then, you know, you're going to pick out that clean seed and spread it on a labeled coffee filter or paper plate. You want to label that with pencil so it doesn't run. And you're going to want to put on the label what variety it is, any other information that you might like to have on there, like the year you saved it from. Maybe you want to write heavy producer, it ripens early. And after it dries out on that paper plate or coffee filter, you can try and dry them on like a regular plate, ceramic, plastic, whatever you want, but it doesn't have that absorptive capabilities that the paper will. And so the paper helps out to dry it out nicely. So you want to store it in a cool, dry place. You can get these little envelopes at your office supply store. You can also make your own envelopes. There's all kinds of ways to, to package them up. But then on that envelope, you know, and just do these one at a time. Don't get a bunch of seeds all spread everywhere and start mixing them up at this stage. You know, write down the variety, the date, and the source of the tomato, whatever else you, you might like to put on there. You know, maybe you'd write down that you have 2 million seeds or you just have three seeds. You know, just information that's going to work well for you in the future. And now you have a bunch of tomato seeds that you can trade with your friends or neighbors, get on the seed savers exchange, whatever it might be. It's a great thing to take control of the seed that you're using. And tomatoes are a really easy one to do it with. So unfortunately, though, I did mention there is an opportunity for crosses. If you, maybe you got like a bumblebee hotel or for some reason you have all these great pollinator flowers right next to your tomatoes. And so there's just a million bumblebees and uh, your bumblebee got in there and, you know, you, you're not confident that you won't have a cross. So if you want to really be confident you won't have a cross, you choose a cluster of flowers that haven't opened yet and place a paper or cloth bag over them for a few days, right? You can use a lunch bag or whatever it might be. And then if you shake it gently, if it, the wind's not blowing around, give it a couple of taps, it'll help with pollination. And you can remove the bag after the flowers wither. And then you're gonna wanna, you know, tie some sort of marking tape or a tag or whatever, whatever you wanna put on there, but something so that you know you can come back. I'm a big fan of, you know, writing things on the tag so you don't have to continue remembering. 
And then you'll watch to see, you know, if you got pollination, you'll know it pollinated from itself because it was inside that bag if you get fruits. And if it doesn't work, you can try again with another cluster. But the important thing with this is you need to choose that cluster of flowers that haven't opened yet. And that's saving tomato seed. It's uh, pretty simple, but it's, it's, it's a great way to become more involved with your garden.